Stan Jabalisco here uh, to discuss a peculiar form of superbolt which travels upward rather than sideways and downward as a traditional superbolt does. Now, uh, in a video for ham radio operators primarily, I talked about a phenomenon called superbolts where the lightning goes from the top of the cloud which has a positive charge to ground uh, and is vastly more powerful than an ordinary lightning bolt. A super bolt is also known as positive lightning or a bolt from the blue. Positive lightning because the leader which establishes the channel, the conductive channel for the bolt itself travels outward from the positively charged uh, top of an anvil cloud, a thunderstorm cloud, typically 10 miles altitude, usually travels outward horizontal a little ways, sometimes quite a long ways, and finally veers down and reaches ground. And when the return stroke occurs, which is in the other direction as far as electron flow goes, that is from the ground back here to the positive charge, you get a massive amount of current and the potential difference necessary at the top of the cloud to build up enough to create a super bolt is sometimes as high as a billion, that's a thousand million volts between the top of the cloud and the ground. This distance between the base of the thunder shower and the distant strike where the superbolt finally reaches the ground can be up to 15 miles. That's why now when you hear about severe thunderstorm warnings from the National Weather Service they will often mention that lightning can strike up to 15 miles away from a thunderstorm. So if you're a ham radio operator and you get your station fried to a crisp from a thunderstorm 15 miles away, it's not just a horribly weird and twisted imagination turned real. It's just plain bad luck. <laughs> but there's another form of super bold where this positive charge, remember up to a thousand million volts, creates discharges that travel upwards. Upwards to where, you might ask? And the only answer that I can think of is the ionosphere, the part of the atmosphere which has positive charge or negative charge constantly in existence with respect to ground but hundreds of miles or pardon me tens of uh, miles above the surface I, th I think sometimes the ionosphere is around 50 60 miles up and the super bolts can reach towards that uh, ionosphere to presumably equalize the charge or attempt to equalize the charge between the ionosphere and the surface. They'll never succeed, of course, but all over the world, considered at one time, you'll get about a hundred such attempts every second. Those are super bolts, and I'm uh, providing a link to a video that shows a couple of super bolts to the sky some called sprites, some called jets. And a place that that commonly can be done because of the fact that there's a lot of clear weather between the thunderstorm and the photographer is a place called the Thunder Bas Basin National Grassland. Thunder Basin. It gets that name 
from that fact. So it's no accident. Then, and it's because of the thunderstorms that occur there that it gets that name. And where is that place, you might ask? It's in Wyoming, not a hundred miles from the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Amateur Radio, and the United States of Adverse Weather, and we're in that season right now. I can vouch for that. It's the very beginning of July, and the thunder prowlers are busy every night just because the forecast says clear doesn't mean a doggone thing. Those photographers can go out any night at this time of the year and chances are they'll catch an opportunity to see what you will see in the link that goes with the explanation to this video. Stan Jabalisco signing off until next time. So long.